So hello everyone, my name is Linda and welcome to my presentation. Uh, the title of my presentation is uh, Sustainable Stormwater Management Practices in Memphis in the U.S. I share my uh, research with uh, Dr. Pasir uh, by This is going to be my outline and uh, I'll go through them here uh, thoroughly as we move forward with our presentation. Uh, as we all know that uh, the uh, climate change and the global warming is affecting our uh, water cycle. Uh, the water cycle is uh, basically a delicate uh, system of uh, precipitation and evaporation. Now, because of the global warming, uh, the, the, there is an increase in temperature, and uh, because of that, there is an increase in evaporation. So, evaporation increases, and there will be uh, moisture, uh, more moisture in the atmosphere. Now, when the moisture falls as a precipitation, uh, there are uh, chances that uh, this can be an unequal distribution. Like a uh, few areas will receive a uh, higher rainfall, and others will receive a lower rainfall. And maybe a few areas may receive shorter duration, high frequency rainfall. This uh, will obviously lead to a uh, flood. Uh, talking about uh, cycles, uh, there are some climate change effects in cycles as well. The first is uh, increasing in the mean annual temperature of 0 0.01 degrees Celsius per year. And there is also increasing the number of heat waves, the length of the heat waves, about six to eight times since uh, the 1960s. And there is there also increase, uh, the decrease in uh, precipitation uh, from the last century, about one mm per year. And because of the uh, over pumping of the active for the groundwater is being depleted and uh, yeah, and there is also intrusion of salt in the, in the groundwater uh, of, the, of, the, of the island. So, and the main, major, major thing is unequal distribution of rainfall. As uh, the citizens will, will, will know that there is a change in precipitation since uh, decade before and now. You can experience uh, uh, higher intensity rainfalls and uh, uh, shorter duration, high frequency rainfalls more often. So, this is basically our, our, the topic of my research, which is controlling the flooding controlling the peak discharge and controlling the uh, total runoff. Now, how can we control the flooding or how can we control uh, the runoff? The best practices is uh, sustainable stormwater uh, management practices. Uh, here, uh, for example, if we employ a green roof over, uh, over rooftops, then we can uh, control the runoff. We can control the total peak discharges because this uh, vegetation over the roof will uh, reduce the heat island effect, it will absorb the, uh, the uh, precipitation as well, so, and it will also control the urban runoff. Second, uh, stormwater management uh, practices is permeable, permeable payments. Permeable pay payments will allow us to infiltrate the precipitation in the soil, and uh, it, 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 it is basically a combination of uh, uh, concrete and uh, sand and gravel. So, where when the when precipitation when it rains, so the water will. Uh, eventually absorb and uh, it will uh, infiltrate into the soil. The third one is the biodegradation area. Uh, biodegradation are just a shallow landscape depressions, uh, which allows runoff to, uh, to the pond in the designated areas where this runoff will eventually uh, infiltrate into the soil. And the last one is the rainwater harvesting. And in, in our research, we, are, we will be focusing on rainwater harvesting uh, uh, to control the urban runoff, to control the peak discharges, and, in, and also store the water that can be uh, reused for non potable uh, uses. So now, uh, this high uh, water harvesting system allows the storage of water and it also reduces the peak discharge. So, in, in our research, we will be employing rainwater harvesting systems or rainwater harvesting tanks uh, in each of the buildings of the, uh, the university and will absorb the changes in the peak discharges and the uh, 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 total runoff volume. Uh, how, now, how can we simulate such conditions? Uh, how can we uh, simulate rainfall like this? Uh, we can use uh, uh, what I'm using is a SIM software. SIM is a basically an open source software pro provided by EPA, and uh, it gives us a convenient uh, framework where we can uh, design our catchment areas, we can design our rainfall events, and even we can employ some uh, green uh, infrastructure practices or some sustainable stormwater management practices. Some uh, controls you can see on the screen, which is uh, rain guidance, rain roof, uh, rainwater harvest balance. 
the operation of the same is quite convenient. Uh, you know, if, if you want to uh, uh, design a subcaching, uh, we need to input the area of the subcaching, the percentage impervious of the subcaching, the pervious layers of the subcaching, and so on, etc. This can be used as an input. And even for the rainfall events, it is quite convenient. We can uh, run a simulation for maybe an hour of rainfall, maybe 24 hour event, or maybe a day or maybe a year. So this is quite convenient. Now our research area is a Middle East in the University in Northern Cyprus campus. Here the campus is divided into seven basins, and uh, each of the basins is employed with the rainwater harvesting. Uh, so each of the buildings in the basins are employed with the rainwater harvesting uh, system. So the methodology is as follows. First, we will uh, design subcaches in the same software. Then we will uh, design the rainfall event. Here we are considering a rainfall event of 22 and 22 mm per hour as an input. Then we will, uh, the rainfall event is then simulated uh, without uh, the application of uh, some very uh, rainwater harvesting systems. Then we will note down the total volume uh, generated and the total peak generated. Then we will employ the rainwater harvesting system and then again we will simulate the same uh, uh, in, the, simulate the, in the software. And then we will see what changes are we, uh, uh, the changes uh, can be noted in total runoff or peak discharge is observed in the chair by changing the tank sizes of the rainwater harvesting uh, systems. So here, for example, if uh, I have uh, considered a one meter cube of tank uh, in every building of basin one, so then, uh, if for example, without any rainwater harvesting network, we will experience a, a, a total runoff of 280 cubic meter. But after uh, employing one meter cube of uh, rainwater harvesting tank in uh, all the buildings on the basin one, then we can see that there is a reduction of total runoff up to 10.7%. So the best tank size for the basin one is selected as four meter cube because uh, while applying this uh, tank size, uh, we can achieve a total reduction of uh, runoff up to 42 percent, and uh, the peak discharges uh, can also be reduced up to 50 percent. So this type of uh, 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 simulations are done for every basin. For example, this is for the basin one, basin two, basin three, and basin four. For the larger basins where uh, there are less number of buildings, we have considered bigger tank sizes. For example, in this basin four, we have considered 12 meter cube of tank size. So this. Uh, and it follows. So this is uh, the final conclusion from this result would be uh, the with application of sustainable stormwater management practices, the total volume of 220 cubic meter of water is stored, stored which is about 21% of the total runoff produced. So this system is not only able to control the peak discharge from the rainfall event of 22 mm per hour, but it can also uh, control the peak discharge from events ranging from 28 mm per hour to 32 mm per hour of rainfall events. Now, this is just a part of the research. This research, the future works of the research are uh, finding the, an economically feasible solution by using different stormwater sustainable management practices, and uh, such as green roof, bioretention areas, and permeable fields. So, this is it from my side. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all.